And then he goes on on the same subject. As for you, it's because of the blood of my covenant with you that I have set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. The waterless pit could refer to the lake of fire where the rich man who was burning wanted one drop of water on his tongue. There is only one way to be saved from that and that is through the blood of the new covenant with Jesus shed on Calvary's cross. There is no other way of salvation from that waterless pit. It is through that blood of the covenant that we are set free and every one of us who is in the church needs to be established on that the value of that blood of the covenant but that blood of the covenant not only saves us from hell and here's the important thing it's meant to save us from Babylonian Christianity as well for Babylonian Christianity is another waterless pit a pit without the water of the Holy Spirit counterfeit spirits and the blood of the covenant has come to save us not only from the waterless pit of hell but from the waterless pit of Babylonian Christianity dry as dust a waterless pit return to the stronghold and that stronghold is Jesus Christ and it is the church and here is Zechariah prophesying come out of Babylon that waterless pit and come into Jerusalem the stronghold around which the Lord is like a wall of fire O prisoners who have the hope this very day I am declaring that I will restore double to you you remember what Jeremiah prophesied when he said that I know the thoughts and plans I have towards you says the Lord plans for your welfare to give you a future and a hope not plans for calamity and so the Lord's promise is that I will restore double to you a promise of blessing just like after he had taken Job through a period of affliction the word of God says finally Job 42.10 the Lord gave Job double that's always God's end James says think of Job and think of the end of the Lord James 5 the Lord is full of compassion longing to give us double for I will now bend Judah as my bow as my bow and I will fill the bow with Ephraim Judah refers to the two tribes in the south Ephraim refers to the ten tribes in the north who were two separate kingdoms but these two are going to be united and they are going to function together against the enemy Judah is going to be the bow Ephraim is going to be the arrow and I will stir up your sons O Zion against your sons O Greece and I will make you like a warrior's sword here are two brothers they were brothers Judah and Israel they fought with each other and uh, instead of fighting the enemy they were fighting with each other they became two two groups but now the Lord says I'm going to make you one the Jew and the Gentile is going to be one this brother and that brother from different backgrounds who couldn't get along with each other they're going to be one and one is going to be the bow and the other is going to be the arrow and they're going to cooperate with each other in the fight against the enemy they're not going to fight with each other that's the point and I will make them together like a sword against the Grecian enemies and that speaks of the spirit of the Antichrist now again there was a literal fulfillment of this in Israel when we studied the book of Daniel chapter 11 we studied a little bit of it about it about the Maccabean brothers who fought against Antiochus Epiphanes the sons of Zion fought against the Grecian leader Antiochus what is literally fulfilled in Israel is spiritually fulfilled in the church and then the Lord will appear over them now all these verses right down to verse 17 again is going to be literally fulfilled when Jesus appears in glory you could take it to refer to the second coming of Christ it says the Lord will blow a trumpet 
and he'll go forth like lightning suddenly he will appear and he'll blow the trumpet and the Lord of hosts will defend them when he comes down against the armies of the Antichrist in Jerusalem in that final battle of Armageddon that's referred to here and how he will save his people verse 16 but also spiritually applying to the church today the Lord will appear over them he does appear over us his arrow will go forth like lightning the Lord will blow the trumpet and that is in the church he will march in the storm winds of the cloud of the south the Lord of hosts will defend them they will devour and trample on the sling stones that is overcome the sling stones of the enemy they will drink and be boisterous as with wine and this is what happened on the day of Pentecost when they were filled with the new wine of the Holy Spirit and they will be filled like a sacrificial basin drenched like the corners of the altar and the Lord their God will save them physically from the armies of the Antichrist in the future day spiritually today from all sin will save them in that day when they are filled with the new wine referred to in verse 15 as the flock of his people that is the New Testament church for they are as the stones of a crown sparkling in his land this is what God wants his children to be for what comeliness and beauty will be theirs when the beauty of Jesus Christ, of the divine nature, comes upon his people, the word of God says, what comeliness and what beauty will be theirs. What was his will be theirs. And grain will make the young men flourish and new wine the virgins. Referring to the ministry of the word of God and the Holy Spirit that's going to refresh the young people, the young men and the young sisters upon whom the Spirit will be poured out. And the beauty that is going to be ours more completely in the day when Jesus returns and comes over us and blows the trumpet as mentioned in verse 14. We shall see him as he is and we shall be like him. Therefore, he who has this hope, it's written in verse 12, prisoners who have this hope, that's what we read in 1 John 3, 3, he who has this hope of having his beauty upon him one day will purify himself as he is pure. It's amazing to see all these things way back there in the Old Testament. How Zechariah prophesied. He was one of the last prophets before the coming of the New Age. And um, Malachi was the only prophet after him. It was a preparation of that New Age that was coming. 